NASA will today attempt to put a space rover on the surface of Mars. The six-wheeled robot, called Perseverance, will be the first NASA mission since the 1970s to search directly for signs of life on the Red Planet. Our science correspondent, Rebecca Morell, has more. NASA calls it the seven minutes of terror, an approach to Mars at 12,000 miles an hour, before a complex landing system brings the Perseverance rover down to the ground. That's the plan, but only half of all Mars landings have worked. There's danger everywhere. Right in the middle, there's 60 to 80 meter tall cliff that cuts right through the middle of the landing site. If you look to the west, there are craters that uh, the rover can't get out of, even if we were to land successfully in there. If you look to the east, there are large rocks. You know, landing on Mars is uh, not for the faint of heart. Perseverance is the most advanced rover that NASA's ever built, and it will be hunting for signs of life. Its robotic arm is equipped with a drill to collect rock samples. The hope is any microscopic creatures that once lived on Mars may still be preserved. For the first time, NASA will also be testing a mini Mars helicopter to provide a new bird's eye view of the planet. And back on the ground, the rover will store some of the rocks. A future mission will bring them back to Earth. This mission provides our best chance to finally answer whether life existed on Mars. First, though, NASA needs to get its rover safely down. There are some nerve-wracking hours ahead. Rebecca Morrell, BBC News. And let's get more on this now with Sue Horn, who's head of space exploration at the UK Space Agency. Sue, uh, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us on BBC News. And let's begin with what, as Rebecca was saying, NASA is calling those seven minutes of terror, the final descent onto the surface of Mars for perseverance. Um, take us through how that might happen. Well, the first thing is the, the heat of the atmosphere as the spacecraft enters the atmosphere, that starts to slow it down. It then releases a parachute, slowing it down further. And the last few minutes, you have a retro rocket holding the spacecraft up above the ground, and then there's, it lowers the rover onto the ground. I... My analogy is that last bit is rather like Thunderbird 2 putting down the pod. OK, well, uh, you know, there's a lot of jeopardy involved and, and you can see why NASA is calling it seven minutes of terror. Absolutely. How quickly will we know if it's been successful and, and how quickly might we see if it has been successful pictures from Mars? Because I know that Perseverance is absolutely loaded with cameras, isn't it? It is loaded with cameras. They will take a, a little bit of time, but we will very quickly get a, a, an early signal. And there are um, telescopes around the world tracking this. In fact, the Goon Hilly Station is tracking and receiving signals from the spacecraft and, and the lander. So we'll know very, very early. But it takes 11 minutes for those signals to get back to Earth. So... When we, when we see it enter the atmosphere, in reality, it has either successfully landed or crashed at that point of time. Uh, bated breath, I think, is uh, going to be the, yes. uh, the order of the day for everyone involved in this. And tell us uh, a bit, if you would, Sue, about the UK's involvement in this project. We were involved in the very early uh, design stages. Our scientists were involved in deciding which instruments were needed to look for life and select samples to then be cached to be collected later. We are heavily involved in the, our scientists are heavily involved in, in the operations. So selecting exactly which samples to bring back, we can only bring back between 30 and 50 samples. So we've got to be very careful about which samples we, we select. And, and because they, those, those rock samples uh, are absolutely what everyone wants to get their hands on. Um, what do we hope to tell from those samples if, if everything goes according to plan? Well, we want to understand the geological history of Mars, when the conditions were right to support life and for how long, and if we're very lucky, to find evidence of that life, organic remains of organic material. That's... And then... Sorry, Sue, go ahead. And therefore, going to a landing site that was once a lake with a delta, so it has sediments. 
So it's the same, same sort of material that in, in Earth you would find fossils. So that's why we've selected that landing site. And that material, obviously, coming from Mars, has to be handled incredibly carefully, um, a period of quarantine almost, I guess. Uh, yes, when it comes back to Earth, it will be treated as if it has got life on there. So at no point will the outside of the, outside of the, the, the container actually contact at, uh, Earth's atmosphere. There's going to be a special facility built to contain the samples so they can be looked at, checked that, the, that there is no, nothing dangerous on them. Uh, as, a, as the first step. Sue, thank you so much for uh, talking to us. Uh, an exciting day ahead. Sue Horn there from the UK Space Agency talking about uh, NASA Perseverance rover. Now, we heard earlier about the bad weather in Texas. Uh, take a look at this. Thousands of cold, stunned sea turtles have been rescued in the state. The turtles have been taken to a convention center in South Texas in the hope of saving them during this unusually chilly weather. Residents, some of whom lack heat or basic amenities in their own homes, have been filling up their cars with the animals and bringing them to the centre uh, for safety. You're watching BBC News. Geeta Gurumurthy will be here with you next. Before that, a look at the weather with Carol. Hello again. Temperatures are a little bit lower.